Good evening, everyone. We're going to call the Marion Township Board of Supervisors meeting for Thursday, April 25th to work. The time is now 7 8 p.m. Our first item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance, so I'd ask for a big prize. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, into this liberty and justice. As always, the meetings are recorded for audio and video. We ask that you sign up your cell phone to put on library. I'm going to do the same thing for the mouth. And for anybody interested, we do have masks and hand sanitizer in the front of the room. And as always, if you wish to make a public comment, we ask that you sign in. And when you come up to the podium, that you clearly state your name and address for the record. Okay, so first thing is to approve the minutes of the January 20th, 2024 workshop meeting. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. Carol Paul Peter? Aye. Irene? Aye. Jesse? Aye. Okay. There was no January Board of Supervisors meeting due to lack of quorum. Next approval on the agenda is for the minutes of the February 2024 uh, workshop meeting. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Okay, next is to approve the minutes of the February 28, 2024 Board of Supervisors meeting. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Okay. Next is the minutes for the March 14, 2024 special town hall meeting. And those are not done. So sad. I didn't see those. Yes, those are not done. Um, uh, approved minutes of the March 23rd, 2024 workshop meeting. Didn't see those. I'll answer to approve. Second. Roll call. Aye. Aye. I mean, hi. Jesse. Hi. That's what happens when you're writing and walking. It's okay. If you need us to slow down, just say so. And then for March 28th, April 17th, and April 21st, those three are not coming. Okay. They're good. Okay, Irene, do you have anything for the treasurer? Uh, yeah, just a, a brief housekeeping thing with our computer, the problem that we had, uh, the budget got erased from it. So, um, yeah, I have to re-enter in all that data. So for the next <laughs> so for the next meeting, I'll be able to have a, a budget assessment for us. Um, just a, a housekeeping item. QuickBooks is no longer. Um, uh, the program that we currently have we would either have to have a monthly subscription to it, mm -hmm. um, which would uh, an annual subscription to it, would, which would be which would be six hundred fifty dollars a year, or we have to switch QuickBooks online, um, which would be either thirty dollars a month or forty five dollars a month to have the same features that we have. Um, we could stick with the current program, and there won't be any updates available. And whether or how long it's going to work is, I don't know. Uh, when I spoke to a customer service representative, they said, well, you're kind of stuck with it. If you don't update now or you don't subscribe to the annual thing, what's going to happen? We can't tell you. You know, you're just going to be kind of stuck with the program. So I guess as a housekeeping question, are you guys okay if I reach out to Rick Rule to see what his recommendations are? Yeah. The, the other part of that is our, our contract with our current auditors is going to be up um this year. So I want to ask Rick if he has any other recommendations. Someone else should, we should be taking a look at. I got a Two more people to reach out to as far as what their pricing is and if they're available to do municipal audits. That's that's honestly the, the biggest obstacle lot because I want to do municipal mm -hmm. audits. So um if yeah. On, on that point, real quick, Colin or Chuck, do you perhaps have any eyes to anybody that would do municipal auditing that you could recommend a firm or firm to? Yeah, I can I can make one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean I have have a short list, yeah. um, but it's actually calling them and saying, hey, would you be willing yeah. to cancel Township of our size? So Rick is is uh, a local account who helped us previously. He does basically fixing stuff. So he's a problem solver. So he's someone who we worked with well in the past and I appreciate his input to see what he has for recommendations. So honestly, it, if the QuickBooks program is going to keep on working, I have no problem. It, it's, it'll, it'll work. work. Right. It it will work. Work. right. Yeah. We don't get our, any updates. And so, so what we have is, is really sufficient for what uh, um, our our needs are. I've been able to kind of poke through it and, and get into quite a bit of stuff. So, so fu fundamentally, my understanding of the QuickBooks thing, and I'll, I'll defer to somebody who's an accountant, mm -hmm. but um, there really isn't that much stuff that is 
actively changing on right. that sort of thing. It's not like your your turbo tax or whatever the tax code gets updates every year. Generally accepted accounting practices are generally accepted accounting practices year over year. So we'd probably be okay to use it for right. the next one to two years, right. but unfortunately everybody, whether it's Adobe or Facebook right. or whoever, everybody's going to the subscription model because of making Right. We, we don't use certain features of the program. We don't have people coming in and going out of it. We don't accept credit cards to it. Yeah. Everything is, it, all the data is entered in, in manually. So I, I guess I want to just get a feel for what his recommendations because I'm piecing oh. iterations of, of yeah. this before. So double check with him, but I'm pretty confident yeah. that we'd be okay. okay. To this yeah. one time. I don't want $650 a year for a subscription that we probably will not get any benefit out of. But, uh, you know, again, not being familiar with software, are they going to build something into it that it crashes eventually on so that it makes it so... I think um, it's against that. Okay. To a certain okay. Reason. But, okay. Um, yeah, we can we can look at that, but I would say for the time okay. being, get, get his opinion, obviously, okay. with the dollars. I'll shoot, I'll shoot the email then. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Other than that, i got to just get the data into you and be able to have a, um, a budget assessment for our next meeting. Excellent. Okay. Um, at this time, we'll do the payment of the bills. I'll make a motion to pay the bills for April 2024. Second. <clears throat> Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jeffy. Aye. Okay. Uh, anybody wishing to address the board public comment? Uh, again, please come up to the podium, clearly state your name and address for the record, and ensure that you signed in on the sheet. Uh, Al. Howard, you know, 55 Main Street. I got a problem with the back of the, the, the garage. Which garage? My garage. Okay. When they plow the snow, I have to go out there and the snow plow went down there for a hell of a big guy. Right? And I was up here next week, one day. I want to fix. Yeah, I'm understanding. Uh, Jesse, you had actually gone out and looked at it. And I think I did look at it. Looked at it. I did look at it. Yeah. And it, it is filleted. Yeah. Um, now, I do know that the yard behind my yard was also played around the same time. I don't care about anybody's yard. I want to keep mine the way it's supposed to be. I understand. And so the guy comes over, spend about 10 minutes, and then it drove away. So why waste the gas to even come back to the yard? Who, who came? 10 minutes. I think it was. I think it was there. I don't know. We, we asked him to go and take pictures so we understand what the damage is. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, if you don't want to do your job right and bring the stuff that belongs to put it back on there, I'll get somebody to do it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We didn't say he wasn't doing that, but what you saw him with the 10 minutes was just him getting pictures for us so that we could see it. I was out of town at the time, so I couldn't even drive it, <laughs> look at it myself. And I did stop and look so, at it. Huh? I, did, oh, I, I did stop and look at it. Yeah. Uh, and I understand your concern. So I want to talk. Well, understood. So, Carl, I saw you looking over this way. You have something to say? How do you know it's caused by the truck and not the sun? You think I'm stupid? I have a legitimate question. How do you know it's caused by the truck and not the sun? Because they did. Yeah. In, in fairness, um, yeah. I've seen this on, on Shady Cabin. And it's, it's, it is what it is. So, Al, my personal well, mindset on this is if we... Uh, scrape somebody's lawn or dug a, a divot or whatever, go back out and get it fixed. Right. So. I, I don't like that's here it happened the same thing. Yeah. Nobody else except my girl. And I went back there and raked it and made it smooth and do and stone the way I want to do what it's supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. I'll be damned if I'm going to do this every year because the guy is too either too lazy to turn the plow over the other way or don't know how to plow. Well, I, I doubt it's either of those out. So there's, uh, having not driven the plow through that section of town, there's there's a good reason. It's not like he intentionally did it, and it's not a negligence thing either. So bottom line is, if it happened, whether it's to you or to me or anybody else here, if it happens, let us know and work on making it right. We'll get somebody out or a couple of people out to, to tamp it down and make sure that it's not as close to as what it used to be as before. So, Okay. Yes. Just as an aside, at the workshop meeting, we discussed this issue. You could you could have a seat. Yeah. We discussed this issue, and we we're going to come up with a complaint form. Um, to yeah, another well, we were yeah, yeah, that. yeah. So the um, complaint form, so that we would ask residents if this happens to your property, please notify us within a reasonable amount of time. We'd like to have photos documented. 
And uh, a reasonable amount of time, I would say, would, would be within a few days, it, uh, up to a couple of weeks, yeah. uh, considering that if there's still snow and ice, et cetera, right on the ground. Yeah. Um, so this way, the sooner the better, and so we could become aware of the problem and, and remedy it. But again, there's, I know road yeah. shape is sometimes working against you. I know yeah. the, down my way, the turn off of Shady Cabin Circle, you almost have to, like, the, the way the road is, you will hit the grass on the one side. Yeah. 100% every year this will happen. Yeah. And it's usually just a matter. We go out with a, a shovel and turn the soil back over and pat it down. And it's, it's 80, 85 to 90% of what it, what it was before. And then it fills back in in a couple of weeks. No, so, it goes back when you should really be done with pick up sides of plow. Yeah. yeah. So it is very it, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's different. So yeah. that being said, we're all good. We all try to be good yeah. neighbors here. So if something happens, we're going to try to make it right. Yeah. So any problems having the guys go out and run it? No, no. Okay. Which? You got it. If yeah. at some point, yeah, you oh, I, have I did work. work. Okay, come on up, folks. <laughs> I did work, I had been, uh, and I did put a pile of, of uh, rotten and stone back, but evidently, it must have taken some uh, along the way. Well, I mean, if you got to go pick up a, like a bag of dirt or something like that, a piece of crude value or something. That is the kind of stuff that you can get out of consumables. Like if you had to go get a jug of oil or something or wiper blades or something for the truck. Yeah. Just make sure that you turn the receipt in so that we know about. Uh, uh, I, 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 I'd like a sen second opinion. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's kind of half and half stone then brown. Uh, well, uh, well, when in doubt, send, send us a picture. Okay. Yeah, I generally live and die by my cell phone. So yeah, I'll give you the picture tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thank you. This is like I said. Got got stones back here. Yeah. Well, you've been up there with a the bucket to fix it. Bring some stones on and we're. I don't. Well, I, again, I don't. I don't know exactly what it needs, so I'm not going to comment on that. But bottom line is, we'll we'll make it right. If uh, something bad happens, we'll fix it. Chuck. Just just two quick comments. Yeah. I, I'm assuming the property owner. Hereby grants permission for the township forces to come on his property mm -hmm. to make those uh, repairs. You're okay with us coming on your property to fix this? I'm asking you if I'm not. I would say, yeah, yeah. Clear. Yeah. 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 Is, there, is there a date or time that you want to be present yeah. when it's being done? You got to come to this property, okay? Yeah. Because there's something to be done. Correct. We understand yeah. that. You're not you... coming in there and those folks see what you're not listening to, so you can make a report. It was simply to clarify that you are granting the township permission to come onto your property for the purposes of yeah. completing the report. Yeah. I'm fine. Yeah. You're... So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But beyond the gate, you'll buy all. Second item is, and I'm just sharing this for the benefit of everyone. Representative of Municipality and one of their trucks this year sideswiped a car. We had to be driven by one of the planning commission members. <laughs> it was not intentional. We only took the mirror off, um, but nonetheless, it's difficult to operate plow yeah, it on these narrow roadways under snow and ice conditions. It's it's got yeah. yeah. things happen. Okay. Do you want stones or what do you do? As long as it Put back in there and slow down. So we're not back in and out. Yeah, you guys can do it. Yeah, yes. Hash this out yeah. the words, but, but do, you got to, for good reason, do what has to be done to make it right. Yeah. And if there's other people that let the office know that, hey, this I noticed this or whatever, whether it's right now or next year or whatever, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to make sure that we make it right. What? Everyone has Rossman, Wardwell, Water Street, Strasburg. Um, I'm a new member with the MCT. Um, I've been at maybe six or seven meetings, and I was wondering if there's a way that I uh, could find out how much is in our account and how do we, how, I don't even know, because they know that I don't understand all of it. So how can we better ourselves with our playground uh, if later on, instead of building these new things, it's going to be ripped down? Okay. So, so, so there isn't an account per se. 
So you have your account. MTCA has its own treasurer. You have your own account. So that's an issue that you should be identifying with them. If there's something that you want to do that request, requesting funds from the township, you need to make the request first, and then the board gets to approve it. As far as playgrounds improvements, I would do minimal because the newest updated plan is to do a new building as well as a playground. We want to maintain what we have, but I wouldn't ask to invest anything new. I would just rather maintain what we have currently because we're working with the Alton Group and I believe Chuck as well to come up with a grand design for the park and the building. We want to do everything, make it comprehensive. Um, so I would be very cautious about investing any new funds in, into anything in the park. The one thing I would say is if there's something like Mulch, put it down the right mulch. I mean, spittings or you know, yeah. uh, seats like you get benches, those are very easily relocatable. Things like that are perfectly fine. And to Irene's point, you don't necessarily have a checking account necessarily with the town. Yeah, I know we do have one, but I have yeah. seen you. Yeah. Yes, there's there's a budget amount to be asking. But you have to ask us first. Yeah. Um, and it has to be approved by the board for any expenditures out of that account. So you can't just go spend the money and ask us to reimburse you. The a project has to be approved by us first if you're asking for money from the town. Okay. It, case, case in point, the uh, the sign for the car show, mm -hmm. the, the light up sign, that's brought before the board at a time, and you say, hey, it's going to be X number of dollars to rent this. Is the board okay with reimbursing the community association? We signed, we said yes, sure, whatever. You go do that. That way, it's coming from us rather than coming from your checking account. Okay, and for this new thing here, I think it's in mind. Yep. So is that going all the way down the hill here? No, we're actually tentatively because it's still very much in, we're in the discussion phase. It'd be up in this corner where like the basketball courts are. Okay. So that's where that would be. So the I grab one of those. Grab one of those. Um, I think the the current thing that we had in the packet was the building was going to be placed where the ball field is. And the criticism that we had is we want to flip it so we don't get rid of the ball field or have to move the ball field. Because other than the little TLC, the ball field is relatively speaking pretty nice. Um, so there's still a lot moving. We had a meeting um, Thursday. Thursday. Was that last Thursday? No, no, it was it was last Thursday. It was last Wednesday. Thank you. Uh, we just met with the the designer, and we're going to have some additional workshops for people to come in from the community and provide input, and for us as a board to kind of nitpick some things and make sure that next year, when it comes time to request a grant, we have the right stuff in place to be able to actually request the grant. Okay, so with the grant situation, is that how far is that? Is that fifty percent? And I mean, we have we have planning yet to do. The grant that came up this year was for $2 million. $2 million would have covered the cost of the building, but we realized we weren't adequately prepared. And when we took a step back, we realized we needed to do other planning. So we scaled back that grant request to $250,000 so that we have enough money to do all the planning that we did. And as we're learning, once we have our plans in place, essentially our ducks lined up in a row, then it becomes a lot easier to ask for different kinds of grants. The goal for us is to have us completely 100% funded by grants or to do very little math. And what we're understanding is there's a lot of support. We've got support from our congressman. We've got support from our local county. We've gotten a ton of support to do this. And with that kind of a backing, a lot of places are very much in favor for building a new community center slash township building. So we're looking to do this. I, I'm hoping and praying and crossing my fingers, it's 100% funded. Because then really that's the only way we can afford to do it. Okay, when if the building gets somebody asked me and yeah, I put yeah, the answer, yeah. Yeah. gets torn down, mm -hmm. what's gonna happen to this? This, this would be the municipal buildings for the garage, like the uh, the truck storage and the salt shed and stuff would still be on this section of the property. But the, the main building, like the meeting space that we're in right now, would be in the, the new space. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, more, very much more to come on that. This is again still in the earlier parts of things. Yeah, exactly. Good evening. Yeah. Oh, William Hunter, 3955 Winter Road. 
28 year resident of Marion Township. Um, and I want to apologize right out of the gate here because I haven't been following this whole trash recycling. Oh, I, yeah. But um, I just want to get some clarity around the, the current cost that uh, the residents have to uh, take on. Am I correct in saying that it's going to cost for trash and recycling $650 per year? Is that, is that the cost? Well, top of my head, that is correct. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Now, more other than the understanding, or you should be under, you, you understand that we're paying $75 a quarter. Yes. This is a huge increase. Yes. So uh, I calculated this and don't hold me to it, but it's right around 130% increase. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I get it. You know, the cost of this since COVID, man hours, labor, everything's gone up. But I did a little checking. Um, b and disposal on a lease board. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have some relation in Brooks County. Their trash only, I want to compare apples to apples, is $90 a quarter and ours is 111 Do you know when they started their agreement? Because the reason ours was so cheap, relatively speaking, was because it was entered into during right before COVID started. We were on I, I, I understand that. Yeah. And his, this is a single dwelling, okay? So it should cost more because it's an, an individual and not a township. You know that that's what I don't know, it ten years already we've yeah. been doing this, mm -hmm. and that was kind of proposed in the very beginning that if we do this as a in a volume setting, yeah. it's going to cost less. And I don't see that those savings now, especially when I see a local uh, vendor providing a single service for twenty one dollars a quarter less, mm -hmm. and I get it, it's just trash. Yeah, so. I guess my question is, do the residents have an option to opt out to get someone else? Yeah. As the current ordinance? No. So just to give you a little background information on this. So we're we're obviously residents here. We're not yeah. and this yeah. is affecting everything. Yeah. So what has happened is if we rewind about two years ago when we had the, the first three years one up with the when we had complaints all the time about miscollections and stuff falling out of trucks and everything else. We put it out to bid at that point. And even two years ago, it was a 130 or 150% increase over what Eagle had, which is why we stayed with Eagle, even though we had problems. This past year, when the five year, we had no more uh, options to extend with Eagle. We had to put it out for bid again. And for good, bad, or indifferent, JP Mascara was the only vendor that responded to the, the public bid. So wait, wait, wait. And, uh, aside yeah, from that, I just I said this yeah. last month me last month's meeting and it bears repeating insofar as that unfortunately this township is not an attractive place for trash hauling because it's so remote. Like in Newsport, Burke's transfer is not that far away. Like here, there's no close landfill, right? You have Mascaro, you have the Conestoga landfill. In Morgantown, I don't know if there's one in Lebanon, but we're, we're really not close to a facility. And so a lot of the price increase is just a result of gas prices and, and the trucks have to come down. The other part that Mascaro let us made us aware of, and I've checked with other people too, the bidding process, if you want it, you're going to bid on it. So to say that other callers didn't know about it was a false claim. Yeah. If they want I'm not to claiming. Bid, yeah. it's just like it. So other callers check this bidding process as often as they want to. So the contracts are out there if they and they chose not to bid on it. And, and yeah. Mr. Uh, De Janeiro, Sarah's counsel, did give us numbers that we, we did not suffer the highest percentage increase in Burks County. There are other municipalities uh, east of us that were that had price increases of 130 or 140. Yeah, so it's so it, it's it's just you know everyone in the whole county is paying more. And unfortunately, um, they're not buying recycling anymore, kind of. So that's also driving the cost up. They can't get rid of the recycle. So what are they doing? Well, well, they're the scouring the facility. Yeah, so they're they're processing locally now. So we're paying that this. Yeah. A lot of stuff that was processed. I wasn't again. Yeah, I, yeah. I wasn't yeah. aware that no one else did it. It was yeah. just yeah. 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 So, like I said, it, it's unfortunate. This is uh, and I this is thievery. 
And I, I'm not blaming anyone yeah. here, yeah. but it's just, it feels like we're being strong to accept these yeah. terms from these trash yeah. offers. And it's just not right. But that's just my opinion. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, well I, I would I would say it's just a counterpoint. I'll let you say something for a second, Colin, is having the, the background knowledge of we just we did that same exercise two years ago. We did have other companies respond in and they were all right with each other. There wasn't one that was a lot less or like astronomically where they were all within that margin of it being about six fifty, seven hundred dollars a year for crash and recycling. I just don't understand with a, there's a volume setting that we're in. It's a township. Yeah. And we're still paying these outrageous. I mean, it's almost like, it's almost we, like we, we don't, we don't really have, you know, we have some volume. We have a common scale, but really not enough compared to, you know, the bigger piece of town. We'd be at, you know, 455 bucks compared to, you know, a few thousand or, or even more in other places. Yeah. And I don't, yeah. don't get me wrong. I'm not blaming anyone here. I'm just, I just wanted a little clarity. I wanted to understand the process. And you, you told me there was no one else to bid on it. So yeah. if there's a way to bid, you do. Exactly. Well, uh, thank you. As a side note, I really appreciate your, your coming out and voicing the concern and your level headedness and uh, and uh, logical approach to this. Please a nice conversation call the office to call the office. Yeah. And if there's any pickup issues, please have them call the office. Do we have any complaints this week? Yeah. I mean, so far, Everything's been exceptional. They have more guys on their truck. Um, where Eagle had one guy, mm -hmm. and that was a nifty thing. Um, I think they have two, if not three guys, and a supervisor comes out um, after the yeah, he's yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. We did save a little money because the last hauler, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. We, we saved a little money because the last crash hauler gave us the cans. So yeah. not, I'm just going to knock in. Yeah, we're not yeah. Oh, it's a place. Yeah. And if you think that inflation time with plants and construction quotes, we go yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to leave. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're bad. Yeah, sorry. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Seeing no more public comments, um, let me tell you who's on Zoom here. Um, we, we've got Ryan A, which I'm assuming is Ryan Allgaier. Mm -hmm. And that's it. So uh, he hasn't said anything in the comments. So I'm assuming he doesn't have any comments. So we'll move into the main items for discussion. Uh, item number one is the Olson Design Group. Uh, we had last Wednesday a presentation about the new building. Uh, Kim DeRosa uh, has submitted the COVID ARPA multi purpose grant for the planning costs of that. Um, and that was submitted successfully on the 20th of April. Yeah. Uh, do you guys have anything that you want to add to that? Nope. Kimberly's wonderful and fantastic and awesome. I think like that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, next is the Senator Casey discretionary funding FY 2025. Uh, we would need to adopt the resolution 2024 uh, DAP for this. This is a congressionally earmarked funding for rural community buildings. Uh, we would be applying for two hundred and fifty thousand for the planning of the new township building. Uh, that's not due for a couple of weeks to a month, I believe. On that one, I think that's like the first of June. Yep. Um, either way, Kim's on top of it, and we're going to get that one in uh, again with the end stated goal here of having close to one hundred percent, if not one hundred percent, of the building paid for by grants. Um, Next is the DCD Open Application for COVID-19 ARPA PA Purpose Community Facilities Program Grant. Uh, Kim Yorosa from Hyperterra has also successfully submitted this grant request on the 20th of April. And then the LSA Grants account, uh, we made a motion at the last meeting to deposit $1,000 into the account so that it uh, stays open. Yep, and that's what we've been created and taken care of. So if you're going to talk to me about how we cancel LSA, Item, so I just need the checks. Excellent. Okay. Uh, next is the sewer management program. Uh, letters, flags, hangers are ready to go. I believe uh, people are going to be doing door to door, yes. uh, walking around, handing those out. Yes. Starting yes. date. So now, just just let me know. Every people coming door to door, if you want to spread the word, um, and and we're not soliciting, but this is part of the the sewer management program. Okay. So yeah. So real quick, one of the things that we're doing to hopefully drive costs around sewer management, and if we have to do the sewer thing eventually, is 
you're going to get a, a, a two flags. There's going to be one for your septic system and one for your well. When you get it, all you have to do is stick it in the ground and it helps the, um, I guess it would be the engineers that are doing the survey, uh, mark on the map where your stuff is so they can better uh, coordinate and plan where stuff is in the township. So if you get it, we appreciate your, your cooperation on that. Otherwise, there's one more statement that we have. Tomorrow. They're gonna go out tomorrow on Friday, I believe. So, and uh, our, our staff is going out, they're volunteering their time. They're not getting paid for it. So just let you know. So I believe you're gonna see Sue and Dave walking around. Um, and can the lead Rosa from uh, Hydroterra? Are you No. no. No, it's 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 on Main Street. Anyone who's affected by the sewer yeah. by this the, by the sewer system. Yeah, any anything that is currently touched by the non all lot stuff in the Act 537 would be that. So it'd be Main Street, Idris, uh Sheridan, Canal, Shady Cabin Circles, that mm -hmm. selection of roads there. And it's so that we have a, a good approximation of where people's wells are in relation to each other's wells yeah. or septic systems or anything like that. Okay. Um, before, before we yes, Peter. I would just recommend that the board make two motions. Sorry. One to uh, ratify my preparation of the letter that will be handed out, and a second to authorize townships, um, officials, and agents to distribute those. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. So I'll I'll repeat it now. So we'll make two motions. Are you ready, Lisa? Yes. First one is to authorize uh, Kozlov Stout to prepare a letter. Well, rat rat ratify. Ratify. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Right. Okay. So ratify the letter already prepared by Kozlov Stout for distribution with the the flags. Yep. Yep. Second. Oh, second. Uh, which one do you guys second? Get the Jesse. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Aye. Okay, then the second motion is to authorize uh, representatives of the township to distribute the, the letter and materials. I'll second. We'll take turns. Roll call, Peter. Aye. 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 Okay. And again, this is purely optional. It's something that we ask, but it is not a requirement of, of any ordinance or statute or anything like that. So it's it's helpful, but at the end of the day, yeah. I, I will say that to the extent you don't do it, the township will need to incur costs and fees yeah. to go get an administrative warrant to get the survey points on your property. So even if you even if you don't know where you accept it. Um, or your water is currently located, just put the flag out in your in your yard to signify your consent that our surveyor can simply enter your enter your property to get the, the, the markers that it needs. But ultimately it will help hydro tariff um, plan the, the, the most cost efficient way to connect your property with the system. That's that's the purpose of the survey. The actual survey, I don't. I don't offhand know, but that's something that when we know we can do another like letter on people's first letting them know that, hey, next week somebody's going to be out. But yeah. at this point, we don't we yeah. have a date. And, and the ladies are always updating the website. So, yeah. Okay. Hang on. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a great job. Yeah. Please call the office for information, please. Yeah. But uh, that's what I think it's a yeah. uh, uh, half page things shoved into people's doors like, hey, next week this is happening would be a good. Good thing just based on that whole situation. So, okay. Uh, next up is the Act 537 special study. The final draft was submitted to the DEP. Uh, this was the update for the alternative method using low pressure rather than gravity, as well as the stronger wording that we slipped in there about uh, requiring grant funding for this to be any semblance of financially viable. So, now we're waiting for a response. Yeah. Just as a reminder, please, you know, everyone needs to get their septic system inspected. I know we sent out a letter to do things like quarters. You don't necessarily have to do, if you want to do it sooner, you could do it sooner, but please encourage people to do it. Again, the data is very important to Hydroterra. It's very important for our compliance with Act 537. If people are resisting doing that, again, the DEP is going to breathe down our neck. So... Um, and at the last thing we had talked about just having reminders in, in our in our um, in our uh, 
Yeah, yeah. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Speaking of that, if you haven't signed up for the text message alerts and you'd be interested in that, the, the instructions to do that are on the website and it's super helpful. <laughs> Crash pickup missed, or if there's a snow emergency or anything like that, or flood warning, or yeah, or something like this, for example, that we can notify people, and it's very, very, uh, very helpful. I I signed up for it, and the one time we had flooding, I, I actually knew about it before uh, through the text messenger before I knew about it at home. So uh, next is the proposed short-term rental ordinance. Uh, Terry McFarland had sent over the short-term rental ordinance resolution for approval to be advertised in May. Um, Irene, I know you reviewed it, and I also reviewed it. I had a couple of little things. Um, I don't know if you got to see the. Yeah, no, the, I didn't. Okay. Is, is that my edited version? It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. yeah, please, please. So what what I have changed is so you have the. No, the uh, is what Colin has. Well, okay. Yeah. Okay. So you had the the bit about more than three by three to six I three because that's what I was more comfortable with. And I but where where the property is being rented by any combination of tenants because the original wording sounded like it was being rented by a single tenant okay. for up to three months, okay. which is not what we were trying to accomplish. Okay. Um, so 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 just to give Colin some reference, so yeah. it was in the second uh, uh, heading, you had listed 30 days as a, I apologize, I don't have it in front of me, we'll forward it to you. Um, yeah. So you had listed 30 days. In our discussion at, at our workshop meeting, we were talking about limiting it to three months. What so, part of the ordinance are you referencing? Uh, so, uh, is it defi definition? No, it's the second whereas first page. So, whereas short term rentals like Airbnbs, Verbos, uh, and house sharing have become popular, loose uh, use of land whereby a couple or group of people typically rents a dwelling from a property owner for no more than 30 consecutive calendar days while transitioning housing arrangements or right. somewhere right. where they the after that is tacked on now and where the property is being rented by any combination of tenants for no more than three months out of the calendar year. Yeah, because the concern is our zoning, our, our zoning is for residential. And so we don't want to have this creation of micro hotels essentially throughout the community. And eventually, like, there would be no restriction on people buying, buying buy some house. and buying it and just constantly right. out there. And, and now we've destroyed that, that residential community that we're trying to maintain. So I'll um, look forward to this to you and for your review yeah. to make sure that it, it's good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's so just. It's, 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 Third, uh, three month time frame. We don't want these Airbnbs constantly, you know, popping up and people just continuously 30 days or up. Oh, it's a new rental, new rental, new rental. So we no longer have residents. We have these micro hotels essentially throughout our entire township. Okay. Yeah. And if yeah, you go yeah. on, onto the Airbnb website, we have two. Yeah, yeah there's two of them so far. Yeah. I checked VRBO and I didn't notice anything. I, I didn't see any last time I looked. But that was really the only thing. Um, you had a, a typo or reference to long term. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. So so then here we just go back. Yeah. Then. Yeah. So the following where um do we need to iterate the 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 reason for it? I guess just to clarify, just to state it's the intention uh to preserve the zone use of the township for residential purposes uh where properly assigned. So the and the other line is right is there's the need for an efficient system to so, help. Yeah. So just one one point to note again is that our zoning ordinance does not currently regulate okay. the short term rental use. Okay? okay, so what that means under the zoning ordinance is that to get a, to get approval for the use, yeah, you need a special acceptance. Okay, okay? and so the zoning hearing board is entitled to place conditions upon that use to the extent that the special exception is granted. Okay, so this. This ordinance, okay, right, regulates the people who have zoning approval for the use. Which I first, don't think either of them do. Well, they, they, then they, be, they become pre existing yeah. uses, so, still subject to this ordinance. So they could put on us because of the advertisement, yeah. and then they would have to comply with the regulations. But to the extent you have, the extent you have a new B and B, and a township, 
they have to look at that stuff from seven. So, like, if you if you had an Airbnb pop up in the last couple months, they should have received zoning hearing board approval before beginning that use. Oh, so we don't know that. Um, the one, the one I think is maybe a year at most. Yeah. I'm not even see on that, but so. Well, let's forward that. Yeah, yeah we'll send it to you. Let us know your feedback. Okay. If, if that that language in there. Yeah, the, the yeah. spirit of this just make sure we don't have somebody that rents out a house to Airbnb 365 days a year because at that point it's it's a glorified hotel. But there's no way to prohibit it unless you met the zoning ordinance. Um. Uh, okay. Okay. That might be something we have to take to joint zoning. Yeah. Account. Yeah. Like that that's not the, the pur that's not the purpose of this ordinance. The purpose, of, the purpose of the ordinance is not to limit the use. It's okay. Only only your zoning ordinance can do that. Okay. If the purpose is to regulate is to regulate it. So we have to that. Okay. So so right right now, anyone in this township can apply for a short-term rental any in any district. Yeah. Okay. To the extent you disagree with that, right? To the extent you don't want short-term rentals in your R1 district, then you need to go. So, so. Amend the zoning ordinance. Now, again, I, I previously advised that it's probably not necessary for you to do that because, as an unregulated use, the person still needs to get special acceptance. And that would be under the current joint zoning ordinance, correct? Correct. correct. They're two or three years old at least at this point. So both of them would technically be special acceptance. But this, this, this ordinance, however, can, like I said, cannot. Restrict or prohibit. Oh, oh, understood. I'm just saying the, the existing, if we're going under just the joint zoning ordinance of it, that's old enough that it, that our, our inclusion in that predates both of the Airbnbs that we have in the township. Okay. Right. So, okay. The, the, only, the, only, the only question for the board to answer, I think, at this point is at what threshold of Certain amount of rentals in a certain amount of time triggers compliance with this ordinance, and and you can say, well, any short term rental needs to comply with this ordinance. Or, for instance, based on our prior conversation, I thought you had initially wanted something like, well, if you're running out three times, at least three times in a, in a small amount of year, you need to comply. So that that was that was the only main legislative decision for the township to make it on, on this. Yes. Okay. okay. So we'll we'll take another. So if you, uh, do you have the current version? I will send you the yes. current version. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Take a look at the definition of short-term rental. Yes. And determine if you like that threshold or not. Yes. A short-term rental is a dwelling unit or dwelling units on a premises collectively rented by a total of five times right. within any one uh, year period. Person, I think that's fine. Yeah. So okay, so we'll there were one or two little. I think there was something about. Uh, something to Yeah. There's only one word. I said uh, gender. Yeah. Any gender. True. Yeah. This is how people identify the yeah. amount of students, yeah. right? But that's about it. Yeah, it was yeah. immaterial. So yeah, we'll, we'll send you just a quick note on it. Okay. But honestly, I'm comfortable. If, if you're comfortable with, it, with the motion being phrased this way, that's um, subject to some final uh, adjustments, the approval to advertise the uh, short-term rental ordinance. Because like, it, other, other than that question around the the, the additional well, language on that first and second whereas everything else was, was spot on. But we, we, no, we'd have to take out well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like his, his original one was fine. Yeah, his original was fine. So we'd have to take the issue of the joint zoning to limit to three months. Sure. That's, so it would be at the next time. Yeah. Okay. So they make, make a motion to authorize its advertisement with the minor revisions that you just outlined. Okay. So I'll make a motion to advertise the short-term rental ordinance. With the minor alterations as discussed. I'll second. Roll leader. Aye. 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 Jesse. Aye. Okay, the next one is the proposed long-term rental inspection ordinance and fee schedule. Uh, craft 
provided some sample ordinances. I did not finish doing a review on this one. Um, Irene or Jesse, do you have anything that you want to put on on this one? But I think we're it. everything and actually in the car right now. So it, it, we, let's take a little bit of a better look at it. Okay. Yeah. And Peter, just yeah. as an FYI, at the last meeting, I advised the board that the long term rental ordinance yeah. should basically mimic the short term yeah. rental ordinance for ease of enforcement. Yeah. And that I su suggested we pass the short term rental ordinance first before focusing and finishing yes. that Perfect. long term rental ordinance for now. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next is the Western, or excuse me, the uh, 4050 Conrad Weiser Parkway. Excuse me, jumped ahead there. Um, do we have any news on the 4050 Conrad Weiser Parkway situation? Right. So I think at this point, um, the township is going to try and get the consent of the secretary or manager to enter that property for the purpose of a code inspection. Okay. Um, I've spoken with Tohawk and Township solicitor. She has spoken with the police department. They have agreed to be part of that inspection, obviously, depending upon the consent of the manager slash secretary there. To that end, I have prepared um, a letter seeking the consent of that secretary, um, which advises her of her and the property owner's constitutional rights with respect to being able to say no, not having a police department. So at this point, what we need to do is we need to approve this consent letter that I drafted and then authorize an attempt to do a code inspection there at the consent of the secretary. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, consent letter that was drafted. And, and, and authorize uh, the townships seeking of the consent to to conduct the code inspection. Okay. Dan authorized the seeking of consent for the code inspection. Second Anderson. Yeah. Roll call. Aye. Peter. Aye. Uh, Jesse. Aye. Irene. Aye. Yeah. Do we need to? Do no, but, but I, I, I would ask that the person, the supervisor going along with Kraft and the police department contact the chief of the police department to schedule that time. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure, sure. Because they're, they're, they're expecting one of yep. the contact. Yep. The okay. 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 So I need to support me with crafts. And the chief. Okay. Okay. Not a problem. Who's going to be in charge of that? Do we know who's spearheading that? Like which guy from craft is doing that? Well, well, Craft, all the crafts are put off. Okay. Any, any any individual okay. of that firm can be involved, but I I think that Glenn Burlett is the supervisor of that department. Okay. So at a minimum, him and, and maybe uh, Jeff Bogue as well. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Excellent. Well, okay. Very good. The continued okay. Uh, next up is the Western Burbs Joint Zoning Ordinance, the Section 403 Amendment about the pets and small domesticated farm animals. Uh, we finally have a meeting date with the Joint Zoning Group. It is the 16th of May at 7 p.m. in the Heidelberg Township Building. Uh, Jesse and I will be there, and we uh, need to make a motion effectively to approve the new date. Correct. So at, at, at that meeting, you'll be seeking the recommendation of the Joint Planning Commission for approval to enact the ordinance. Okay, so after, assuming that happens, there, there, thereafter, we'll need to submit that ordinance to the county yep. and the Municipal plan, Planning Commission. Okay. okay. They all will then have 30 days to review. Okay. When that, during that period of time, we can advertise and then um, a quorum of every municipality involved in the joint zoning, zoning ordinance must confer upon one meeting to act in enacting that ordinance. Okay, so that's the process moving forward. Good end. Even if it's one, like let's say none of the other municipalities are interested in that being, they all still have to approve it. Yep. Okay. okay. Uh, next is the property maintenance issue on six six. This is the building owned by AT&T. Uh, it was approved at the March Board of Supervisors meeting to have 
Frank McFarland sent one final letter to at new headquarters in New Jersey and asked the property owner for permission to be on the property to uh, further review that, that site. Uh, this notice of violation was sent in April on the 11th from Crafts. Um, did we get anywhere with at t or no? I haven't heard anything from Crafts, so I assume that that demolition notice has gone unanswered. Not surprised. Um, the, the next step, assuming they don't respond within the 30 day period, is to go get the consent of the, the abutting property owners, um, pull, pull an administrative warrant against AT&T, uh, and then at that point, we'll want to um, con contract for that work. Yeah. If it's under the printing threshold, obviously, you can close if it's open and immediate. But that, those are the next steps on it. Uh, I would say at this point, let's let's get the consent of the property owner. Uh, Chuck, is that something that somebody? Yeah, I have, I have, a, I have, a, I have a letter to that, to that end. Okay. I don't know if you see me yet, Chuck, but uh, I can get it to you. If, if you're asking me, wow, well, we property owner again. Yeah, I can certainly. Yeah, because I, I think if I recall correctly, you've been talking to the property owner yes. previous. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay, uh, next we discussed very briefly during public comment, the property damage from clouds. There were a couple of areas that were outlined uh, that did receive damage during the snow, snow removal. Um, obviously residents like to have these areas fixed. Um, we are working on getting a, a formalized uh, submission form in that if there is damage and burden from plowing in the future that we can take them in in the same sort of format each and every time. And then obviously go and do what has to be done to address said damages. Um, so we'll we'll get that in place. Um, I imagine we just have a motion to approve the use of that form once it's done. Um, but I, I didn't get a, a huge chance to look at it other than a cursory fashion over the past couple of days. So <clears throat> anything that either of you would like to add to that? No, no, that's the best thing. You know, we have a report, residents can give us a call. But they could pick up the form eventually on our website and submit it to the office and so we have it documented. Yeah, I mean, eventually, just as a segue on that, I think it'd be really nice to maybe have like a pothole report form on the <laughs> website. No, uh, you're yeah. with that, so. everywhere potholes, potholes are gotcha. Um, speaking of that, don't let me forget, I do want to make uh, uh, um, a motion towards the end there. Like we have to amend the agenda. We have to amend the agenda, but I want to get cold patch ordered. Do you amend the agenda for that? Or is that it's it's going to be a, a cost and it's not on the agenda already unless we have a road thing. But it's not an emergency type of a thing. So yeah, you can't. Yeah. Has to be an emergency thing to amend the agenda. So, is yep. it an emergency? How much money? Sure. It's not a huge supply yet. off the top of my head. I don't know, maybe a couple thousand. Okay. Okay. Sorry. You can always buy it and ratify the purchase okay. at the next meeting. Okay. So we'll resolve an agreement. We'll, we'll talk about that later. But there's a lot of spots on the roads that were there last year, and there's ton that have opened up that we need cold patch. So we'll I'll do that at the end, but okay. just don't let me forget. Okay. Are you keeping track which roads what? Cold patch? <laughs> yeah, uh, we are we're we're working at the top end of uh, of Marion Township right now, and and School Road. We start. We we say me and Dave say, uh, let's let's go fill this hole up on such and such a road until we get to School Road. Uh, we don't get done with school, school roads still. And uh, and I have a load of full pack sitting in the garage right now. And one of the trucks, I get Dave and Kevin are going to go out on Saturday morning okay. and, and do that. And uh, they'll probably get done with school roads. Okay. Good. Uh, Good. But I mean, there's, I don't think there's a single road with the exception of maybe Hickory and that, that section of. Uh, Road that was down that number of years back that's newer, everywhere it's got bottles this year. So, yeah, I know, I know, uh, and uh, and uh, uh, I think we're done on on the uh, on the other side of 419, like with Fourth Road and 
and canal, uh, uh, what is it, canal, uh, Forge Road and Charing Forge Road, I think we're done on that side of 419, uh, like, like uh, the other day, Dave said, well, let's go around there and, and hit school road. <laughs> So we, uh, we got uh, on the school road. That wasn't enough on the truck line anymore. Yeah, well, the school road is probably going to be on the truck line. Uh, well, we're just taking the little truck. Uh, that's all the time we have during one day. Uh, this, uh, this is the fourth truck. Uh, little truck we got. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and I guess we get about two and a half tons. Okay. So thank you. Thank I, you. I, I went down this afternoon and got that load and setting on the garage right now. Okay. Very good. And thank you for getting on top of that. But I have a feeling based on what we had already like purchased, we're gonna we're gonna need more. Yeah, we will. Yeah, yeah. And uh and uh the so, uh, more we can do. <laughs> I mean uh, that tire that tires uh to retire retired people uh, just doing it. Yeah, yeah that's, it's they're not all gonna get past the day. Yeah. It's gotta keep keep at it. Yeah. So uh, and uh people are asking asking us about uh uh Jared Road, you know, if we're gonna do that and uh, we said we want to see what you say at the meeting tonight. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Next up on the agenda is the 2024 road projects. Uh, engineer has. Yes, please. When they fix the roads, mm -hmm. right? They get dumped with the car in there, and then go back and forth with the truck with the wheels. But you still got a a bump. So why not invest on the, for, on the rover, and when you put it down there, you make it smooth. In the wintertime, yeah. in the wintertime, when the plaza yeah, is smooth, it pops. Yeah, but if it's smooth, mm -hmm. you don't pick up nothing. So we, we have a tamper. Are you guys using the tamper? No, we are. Oh, what you're telling me? Uh, no. Cool. Yeah, yeah. We, we drive over it. Yeah. We, we, have, we have the kangaroo tamper. Can you do Dave start using the kangaroo tamper because Al's point is valid. You don't want to have a crown on that. Otherwise, it's bumpy when you drive on it. And it's how you guys said it would plow. Uh, we have the we have the tool. Let's use the tool for the job. That's why that's why when you when you plow the soil, you don't want to plow it down because you hit one of one of those plows there, you knock the kid out. Of it. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> So do we do we need like a little trailer or something for you guys with the kangaroo tamper or like what's the what's the oh, we, we have to take the tamper you can take yeah. the uh, you know axle or something on the axle and to do the thing we need a machine. Yeah, so that's what I was saying. Like if you need a little like tow behind trailer to go behind the truck or something for equipment. Let us know. That's and that's the stopping point. She we not. It's like a steel plate that just yeah. We can't have the rock. Like it's equal. Oh, we can't go with that. So 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 we need to formulate this a little bit better. We need to start looking at costs and see what else we need. Yeah, if there's if there's something that's preventing you guys from using a piece of equipment, whether it's the tamper or anything else. Tell us, let us know because we want to do things the right way so we don't have lumps in the road or anything else. So, if there is something, we'll, we'll figure it out and we'll work with you on that. But, Al, to your point, it, it should be tamped out because of what you get lumps at. So, I, I pay a more money, I fix a little bit, so nothing gets fixed. It, it, it ruins the equipment, and then we got to pay for the fixing equipment. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't make any sense to me. Everything shouldn't. Everything needs to be tamped. Huh? Everything yes. needs to be tamped. Yeah. At least with a hand. Yeah. yeah. Everything needs to be used in mechanical tamper. Yeah. At least use a hand. Yeah. yeah. Driving driving the truck over is a poor sense. And, and for what it's worth, which I don't expect you and Dave to go out and hand tamp all these, because that that will kill one of you. Which is why we have the gas the gas power. Uh, 
the arrival or we're not ready to support the training was some sort of to make it more hey you know to make it more of an I I had the timer on the typo, you know we have a Bible point but that 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 mushroom that I it was too the first sort of too us. Can we turn that down? No. Yeah, no. When we get a tamping unit, it fits on the like, skateboard or something. Well, we have we have the, the back of the back of the John Deere like running loader. So you're I thought we can we have a hand one too, but I, I forgot that we have a fire like vibrating plate for that. Plate. So we have yeah. one that's actually right for the back. Of the yeah. Plate. But it, like I said, I used that one time and it just much room that I have. Well it's gonna, it's, it's gonna take some yeah. practice. It's gonna take some practice. You gotta, you know, use your yeah, to be able to get better. I don't think so. Well, uh, so. I'll tell you what. For everybody following along in the audience, we're we're gonna work on on this because we have the equipment. We just need to make sure that it's being used and being used correctly. So, whether it's school road or sharp or Army forge or whatever, when we put a pop pop hole patch in, the goal is to have it be. Uh, yeah, road crew employee. Yeah, Ryan, you can, you can hear if you're uh, you're being volunteered for some expertise, but uh, yeah, that's actually a fair point that Ryan has probably used that a lot and could give which some good. Tips and tricks on, on how to use it. So, either way, we'll, we'll be doing more on that because there's going to be no shortage of pothole patching this year. Okay. Um, going back to the 2024 road projects, and here has to get some estimates for Sheridan Road South. We're going to put Boulevard in the county line. Did I say? Oh, jeez, I'm sorry. Um, I, my computer skipped way ahead. I must have bumped my, my cursor. Um, uh, road maintenance, clean parts. Okay, so the I apologize. The next item on the agenda is road maintenance. About cleaning, uh, developing a plan to clean out culverts, uh, snapping in with the the five to six year maintenance plan on getting roads fixed and maintained, and getting to a point where we are on a preventative cycle rather than a uh, preparation sort of format. During the workshop meeting, he asked what should he go out at some point. Um and so uh, actually document all, all of our culverts. Did we had ordered a map? Yes, and so, brought that over. so we, we could pin the map so where everything is. Yeah, and we had yeah, asked which if you can't get into the culvert physically, that John could come out and assist them without get the drone in there so you can get a really good view of, of what the conditions are mm -hmm. because we have to start looking at everything and start getting Got to start catalogs. Catalogs, yeah. knowing what we have exactly. and, and getting things before there's there's a big problem as best as we can because unfortunately infrastructure is going to be a new buzzword and there might be more funding for infrastructure. Yeah, yeah. So and the other thing is we had those three culverts a couple of years back that snuck up on so in the yep. sense that they were just kind of there and then suddenly they weren't. Yep. So, yep. Yeah. so it, it, it's getting around and maintenance, 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 and documenting and knowing what we have and what the condition of it's in so we could attend to the worst first. So, yeah, one of the things that it would be relatively easy to do and I'd like to see us do is when we get like a report of whatever from Butch that's like this culvert at this road mm -hmm. and this road is let's grab GPS coordinates yeah. and let's get a, a table going, even if it's yep. just an Excel sheet of like a figures, what yep. it is, here's the problem, here's the GPS coordinates. Because then one that'll be useful for us for now to a, a unique record of these things other than like it's on these two roads somewhere. Yep. Um and we also might be able to back that into something in the future yep. where it's a little more info driven yep. on and like, probably be able to pull the GPS oh, when you take yeah. a picture if yep. you're on the logging if it's a GPS okay. would you be able to help with yeah. create the database? Yeah. Okay. No so so you know, which doesn't like to use computers. So yeah. I think that's very important that we create that database because I can tell you there's so much data that has been lost because it wasn't 
put into a set kind of format. Yeah. I can tell you from all the financial information. Everything's on paper. I can go back and pull everything from paper, but that's just so time consuming. Having everything on the computer to be able to create any kind of a database to get that information is so useful. The, so the quick access to stuff that really is okay. the big thing. So okay. well, and one thing that one tool that you could utilize and the secretary had asked me about was the tool the GIS database. Okay. Um, now that requires requiring some software and of course puts that into it, but then once it's set up, you can literally have it's an interactive app that you can see all your signs, you can see all your solvers or any other products. And it creates a really good record. You can pull it up, it'll have a coordinate, it'll have a picture of the sign, what have you. So can you send us the details yeah. on that? Because I'll I'll get that installed like right away. Because one of the things that I've asked it's, 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 it's software. I mean, it's something. To, so I have someone in our office that does set these systems up. Okay. Yeah. So maybe I'll get some more info from him on what the program would okay. be. Okay. And then provide the board with a memo or something to that effect, what it, what it would entail. Right? Okay. To set something. Yeah. Because I, I wanted to start cataloging the signs. Everything. So it can be everything. Yeah. If we, can, if we can do that digitally, that would be fantastic. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but if I look at spreadsheet, I just see a bunch of numbers and then and grid and data. Um, for me, it would be easier to see a map of the town from each culvert mark yeah. on yes. the map. It's on a digital yes. slide. Yeah. 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 If it's, it's, up, if it's red, it plans to, like, if it's red, we got to make it green, right? Like a little button there. Hey, here's a culvert. It's screwed yeah. up. It's in red. Let's make it green. We know oh, we yeah. suspect that it was clean or whatever. I, so I like, like the that. visual aspect of it too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Picture really well, then, a thousand words. And then you have back end with guts of that. It's going to cost money. Well, I'm not even just going to have back end guts of that. Yeah. All of those data points right. trying to get together. Yeah. So if we started collecting some of that and we need to advance the GIS system that Chuck was talking about. We already have yeah. the data. Yeah. Yeah. Put the hard data from the GPS. Exactly. We have to try to figure that So So we need to do this because, mm -hmm. like, um, unfortunately, there's so much information that's been lost. That, yeah, well, yeah. it's in here somewhere. Right. You know, yeah. And so we need to just keep on moving forward. And thank you. Like, yeah, we, we rely on you guys for input a lot. Thank you. Because this, this completed that idea that we had during our, our workshop meeting. Thank you, Chuck. Yes. Perfect. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, giving Chuck, or giving Chuck, giving a much more work to do. You know? That's okay, you know, and, and, and if you have a day where you think you're going to go out and look at culverts, if John's around, I think John would be happy to go with you just to go and understand and, and get an idea of, of stuff. Yeah, so I'll come out with you. Uh, uh, I was uh, painting the culverts today. As you know, we got the PA1 call uh, overnight, and I was painting roads today, but I, I guess I didn't mark enough on down your way. Yeah, what was, do we know like what the PA1 calls were for? Because I saw a bunch of surveys. They didn't work for, for the individual. But it was, it was a design consultant, obviously doing a, one, a design phase one call. Gotcha. So all the utility companies kind of mark mm -hmm. their, their facilities. And I advise through the secretary to let Butch know that the township should also be marking any, you know, you don't have a work in sewer system, but any storm sewer or anything that you're aware of as far as buried utilities should be at least approximating some mark. Yeah. Um, but I can't remember the individual's name, but and I don't know why it was, it was so many tickets, what they call tickets mm -hmm. and not. Yeah. Um, but it was different location basically around the property, I'm assuming. Um and then again, just in the design phase, we, I don't have any idea what's coming. We've got a lot of information other than uh, who submitted the ticket, it's based on information, location, or whatever. I, I was just curious because I like, saw like two or three different trucks mm -hmm. and I guys going out surveying stuff. Sorry, they said they're doing it for the sewer. Okay, it might have been oh, well, there. Maybe, it's, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Okay. They were yeah, the, 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 design, the, the design firm was not high comparable. No. no. Yeah, it was easy to Yeah. Oh, there's a little survey. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, and then that's what it was. Yeah. No. Okay. Uh, next up is the Wintersville Road culvert. This is 3820 Wintersville Road. Uh, we authorized this in February to be put out to bid. 
Um, it was not to put out the bid. It was to start on the design ah, process okay. for that. Thank you. Perfect. So, um, and we have started that, but I'll have more information next month. because We had a bunch of other things going on uh, to advance projects here for the township. That was in the works. Very good. Uh, PennDOT maintenance. Uh, letters were received from PennDOT road maintenance uh, for the mowing. And I believe that's just the mowing. Or is that the mowing and the mowing? Well, it depends on letters received from PennDOT to, uh, for road work uh, being performed in August and September 2024. Item number 15. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My only question is is it one or two agreements that we have with them? One for mowing, one for snow, or is it a single? No, it's two different. Two different ones. That's what yeah. I thought. So is this the snow or the mowing? What do you talk about? 15. 15. The, the maintenance. Mowing. Mowing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because I know that that agreement has to be renewed. It's not already. But Colin's down there nodding. Yeah. If you have not if you have not already, yes. Yeah. I'm, I think Val and somebody's on that already. Okay. Well, then if that's if that's good, that's good. I know it's a really good question. I think I'm the assigned. All right. Is that right? I believe. Right now, I, I believe we authorized to be signed, but I don't recall it ever actually being signed. I had to sign it by reason. Uh, okay, so we received letters from PennDOT road maintenance uh, for August and September. Uh, this work will be on uh, State Route 3004, Carving uh, Forge Road between Hawk and Forge Road and Heidelberg Road, as well as State Route 4010, Christmas Village Road between Rarisburg Road and Heidelberg Road, uh, as well as State Route 419, Rarisburg Road between Conrad Weiser Parkway and the Four Corners Road. Is it safe that we would be in the agenda now that everything's signed and approved? And I don't think so. The only thing that we would want to do is if you get an update from PennDOT about like specific dates within August or September, okay. do me a favor and just put it in under my comment section rather than putting it as an agenda item only because okay. it's, it's made aware. Okay, next is the 2024 road project. I mistakenly jumped ahead on earlier. Uh, engineer had has, uh, has had gotten there in the road south from Williamson Boulevard to Lebanon County, uh, roughly priced out at $326,000. There in the road north from Williamson Boulevard to School Road, $370,000. Stouchburg Road, not, uh, and $900,000. And Lindersville Road, $532,000. So roughly uh, $2.1 million. Um, did, based on the high price tags associated with all of these road projects. We did approve Sheridan Road South from William Pet Boulevard to the Lebanon County line. Um, Chuck, is there any update on that? Yes. So I, I think this agenda item could really kind of strike out and remove most, most of the estimated numbers there. Um, you know, basically this, this project now is, is Sheridan Road. And, you know, we're, we're, we're in the process of the design for that. We have completed the field survey and feel it's necessary to design five, five or six replacement for new culverts to address some of the drainage issues along there. Uh, and then we're also you know, working in the specifications to have bid documents ready to go. So I'm requesting the board provide some authorization for me to advertise the Sheridan Road drainage and pavement improvements project. Um, and I'm thinking that's going to happen here sometime in May. So that's why I don't want to wait to the May meeting to be able to offer, advertise that project. And again, it's for the estimated number up there at the top, although you know, we talk about the, these estimates in a, in a little while. But um, Nonetheless, you know, if we're going to get this project done, we have to uh, really get get the bid documents finalized, the design finalized, and advertised for bid. I'll make a motion to authorize the advertisement of the drainage and roadway improvements for uh, Sheridan Road South from William and Boulevard to the Lebanon County Line. Okay. Second. You can Yeah, advertise for bid. <laughs> Uh, and I will use second name, correct? Okay, roll call, Peter. Bye. 
Hi. Does he? I mean, sorry, it's me. It's okay. It's okay. So, this, Mr. Chairman, the, well, the next item is 1700 guide rails. Yes. You know, the update there is um, we reached out to, I think it was at least four local guide rail contractors within the region. None of them were CoStar vendors. So, given the price estimated cost for this guide rail, um, I'm going to also add for authorization to advertise for bids. Uh, for this project because we are in the works of preparing uh, those documents. And my goal would be, it's some complicated project to bid that here in early May and come back to you at the May meeting with some bid numbers for that. Okay, I'll make a motion to authorize the uh, advertisement for bidding for the Hickory Road and Bolliger Road guide rails. Oh, actually, excuse me, I strike that the uh, William Henson for Hickory Road. So the wrong well just, just William Penn Road at this point. No, no ball, uh, no no hickory. Then it is okay, William Penn, but well, I mean there's there's we like might, 20 feet if that on, on hickory. Then we should include that. Okay. So we will add in hickory road then. Yeah, it's it's a super small amount right that's why we have problem getting an economies of scale. Well, yeah, now's the time to do it. Of course, following the road, following the road will yeah. be on hold at this yeah. time. Exactly. Yeah, okay. I, as soon as I said that I noticed the wrong. Perfect. So the motion is to authorize the advertisement for bidding of guide rails to be installed on William Penn Boulevard and uh, Hickory Road. Second. Road Hall Peter? Aye. Marine? Aye. Sheridan? Aye. Okay. Just think about account balances. We should have a healthy budget <laughs> yeah. even for next year. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah, based based on what we had talked about at the beginning of the year and what we had talked about with the budget, we shouldn't deplete the either the liquid fuels or the, the budget amounts that we have set aside mm -hmm. or we're working the general mm -hmm. fund through through any of these things. Um we have enough that if something comes up as an emergency, we can cover that without it being a break the bank mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. So well, he, both the guide rail project yeah. and the um Sheridan Road project mm -hmm. You know, we have authorization from Penn down on one from liquid fuels. Mm -hmm. um, but we will pursue liquid fuel, liquid fuel funding for any project. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Who, who was that? Our real company that uh, put the guardrails up when you put the culvert in? Yes, yeah, so that was one of the ones we reached out to. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, next item on the agenda is road issues. Uh, we have been receiving some complaints about school road. Two people wrote in asking when it would be taken care of. This is a heavily traveled road. And people are wondering if it's going to be paved anytime soon. Um, the road crew is working on filling potholes, but uh, we had asked, engineer has to take a look at it. Yeah. Um, and I apologize, Chuck. I didn't get a chance to review the whole, the whole packet. Yeah. Sent by. yeah, I sent that email just this morning. Um, yeah, I, I yeah. did. I did notice on one of the pages here that there's a uh, a cost estimate for doing a binding course or a wearing course on School Road, and the total of that for for School Road, the remaining portions of School Road, is almost a million dollars. It's nine hundred eighty six thousand dollars. Yes, that's so, that's not even a full depth reclamation. That's no, because it would have been called more prohibitive to do either full depth reclamation, place recycling. Um, for a number of reasons that I outlined in the email. So our approach is really to just uh, try and build upon what we have there with enough pavement to provide some structural capacity back into that roadway. Yeah, so that's that's something that we're going to need to look at. But the, the bottom line is we're, we're still sort of playing catch up on certain other roads. Mm -hmm. And we just simply don't have a million dollars in the, the budget to do school road. It's the brass tax of it. You no. Know, so but again, looking at grants and stuff like that. So if we have enough detail, we have a project that's actually planned, we just step the portion ready and we could we could reach out and and, and, and honestly, you know, most of the grant is gonna rely on the limits of the road and what it's gonna cost to fix it. Right. 
we can always supplement that with some photos of the roadways, but that's pretty much your grant application. Um, so yeah, we just need to identify so something and then okay. make sure you're on board with the cost of the application and we can get them submitted. Okay. And again, that was for uh, wood, wood Drive and, and that's, that's for unreconstructed portion of the school road, yeah, which, which is four miles in length. Um, uh, Woods Drive is less than half a mile um, at 108,000. So, yeah, I mean, you're not dealing with small quantities. You're, you're miles of the way to, to deal with it here. Yeah. Okay. So, it's keeping an eye out for grants, and you've got all the information, and it's, it'd be easy enough to use. Absolute grant requirements, but yeah. uh, letters of support might require resolutions and so forth. So it, it, it is can be quite an endeavor depending on the grant program, but yeah. nonetheless. Recommend that we go ahead and we start preliminary things like that as far as getting letters of support of documentation. Usually the letters of support have to include, you know, like we'll send a template to people that can have, they can use, but you identify the funding for and the specific limits or whatever. Okay. Okay. So it, it is tailored to each grant application. Okay. Yeah. So and and we're talking you know, local yeah. politicians, county, yeah. technicians, takeaways look prep as much as we can, but there are going to be yeah. last file items. Yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, and I've been sent, trying to send those, you know, new yes. folks. Yeah. Um, but if there's something you see that you think is, is what we want to pursue. Yeah, well, I looked at that last yeah. one. I don't, I don't know. And, and Butch, anything that makes moving that tamper harder, transport, ergonomics, anything like that, let me know about it, please. Because we're giving ourselves a little more self inflicted bleeding than we need. Yeah. What well, all this road work? We need to get that tamper used. Uh, it's a uh, lot of tamper. Uh, you're going to have to take the back of a rod and load it on there. If you got I mean, the, the backhoe has a tamper attached. So whether it's the, the, the the portable unit or the one on there, or if we have the tool, we'll do. Yeah, and anything that makes it easier on you, let me know. Um, please. Yeah, we have the tractor. If you need the tractor, if there's a paint or tractor, or if there's something else that you need that would make it easier, let us know. I realize that you guys aren't in your 20s, but. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is the extension of the stormwater pipe along Marion Drive to Main Street. Uh, UGI has successfully relocated that pipe in the middle of the road. And I believe one of the later ones further in the front. Uh, but we do actually have some, some bid numbers back for that. Yes. And uh, so last year when we were looking at this project and we're waiting for uh, how to deal with the UGI conflict with their gas main, which as you mentioned, they have re now relocated. So we put out um, soliciting some quotes. Um, I'm going to have to say I am no longer a valid estimator of construction costs <laughs> um, because you know last year uh, we were thinking it was going to be close to the bidding threshold of, and the state doesn't give you much room to work. Um, it's twenty two thousand three hundred dollars. Anything over that, you must publicly bid. <laughs> So we were thinking we were under that threshold. However, I stand wholeheartedly corrected and I'm ashamed because we had a low bid of $55,250 from Algar Enterprises here in Wilmersdorf, uh, all the way up to $90,000. Now this is one block of roadway, 350 linear feet of pipe and four inlets. And I just cannot believe the amount of inflation that is hitting the construction industry. Um, the fact that storm pipe installed is what? getting over $100 a linear foot totally blows my mind. Um, inlet boxes themselves are, again, astronomical, anywhere from 2,500 uh, all the way up to 40, 5,300. So, so the contractors are even bidding a, a wide range here. And we asked for these quotes yesterday at two. When I saw them, you know, I placed some calls. I'm, I'm trying to get a handle on what are the material costs. 
because these costs reflect not only the materials but the labor uh, to install, and of course, operating equipment and what have you. But um, the construction inflation is out of hand. We thought the trash costs were expensive. I mean, this this really makes it difficult to maintain. That this project would be qualified for the fuels. So, as a result of not having a suitable bid below the threshold, I guess I'm going to ask for the board's permission to now publicly advertise the project for bid. Okay, I'll make a motion to publicly advertise or bid the Marion Township, uh, Marion Drive, the Main Streets, Tone Water by front of it. Second. Roll call theater. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Thank you. It's like a question. Do you want to? Uh, Chuck. Uh, yes. Uh, is uh, is the gas company going to take their old pipe on or not? No. The they had tested the old pipe. With no PCBs present in the material, so the pipe can remain in place. If we encounter it during installation, we can remove it as need be. We can leave it in place. I oh, just uh, because we we had talked early mm -hmm. on, yeah. That when yep. if they have to dig their pipe out, that must be the time. Well, they're not going to dig the pipe well, out. They don't it, have to dig the pipe okay. out. So, uh, yeah, we're we're free and clear on that. It's been disconnected at each end. As we hit it or don't hit it, it's not an issue. Well, I didn't hear from anybody. I'm uh, sorry. Sorry about that. It's good, good question. Yeah, yeah, we're we're pretty clear on the old gas line. Okay. Okay. Uh, next up is tree trimming. Uh, we're still working on trying to find some quotes. Uh, everybody that we have reached out to so far has said that we're too far away. Uh, the secretaries are still working on that, and uh, I'm going to make some calls to a couple arborists that that I have knowledge of to see if that's something that's within their uh, wheelhouse of, of doing. Because if you trim trees, doesn't necessarily do municipal tree trimming. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, more on that hopefully next month. Uh, 21 and 22, the two items around Bollinger Road, the, the fill overflow matter itself and the agreement based on possible litigation. We will be skipping those. Um, yeah, we, the update on that is um, we completed the restoration plan and submitted that to the County Conservation District for review and approval. Good. Upon the receipt of such, we will provide that plan to the property owner. Very good, thank you. Okay, uh, next item is the equipment and equipment to repair. A big truck apparently is having some electrical issues when the salt printer is removed. Uh, it needs to go over to Owl Creek to get looked at. It's uh, an FYI item more than anything else. Uh, next on the agenda is the uh, equipment sales. So we had put up on the bid the 1972 John Deere 301 tractor and loader with the Alamo attachment. So the bidding on that started at $2,500 and we sold it for $5,600. Uh, that was the old, old piece of equipment that was sitting there just kind of across. The other item was the 1994 John Deere 210 C front end loader. Bidding started at $4,500 for this and it sold for $6,625. Uh, we made a motion at the April workshop meeting to approve the final bids. The money was received for both bids with a possible pickup date of yesterday. Um, they, did they pick those up? They got the last tractor that they said. Okay. They picked up last night. Okay, so they got the 10 yesterday? Yeah. Okay. And the, the, other, the other tractor more theory. Okay. And somebody told me that was being picked up here in May. May is summer. Okay. I don't know. I don't have a date. Good. I'm pleasantly surprised that we got as much as we did. Yeah. Couldn't use it later on. And uh, and uh, I the next line is nine at Noel League in the front. I, I'm sort of ashamed of it, but he borrowed as is, so so it's, there were no pretenses made with that on me. Yes, yeah. it's, it's what it was. Okay, uh, next is uh, Jesse, I'll let you take the, the helm on this one. This uh, discussion around. Purchasing a small tractor for doing ball field maintenance. Yeah, we were looking at getting a subcompact tractor for maintenance in the park and ball field so we can properly drag it. Right now, uh, Butch is trying to use a full size farm tractor to drag that ball field. <laughs> it's terrible. It's painful to watch. Um, so we need something to get in the corners and make the 
all feel a lot prettier and less uh, under maintenance. Um, so I was getting some quotes and some subcompacts to do the part for part maintenance to keep it all feel better. Uh, right now we stand at four estimates. Um, so that's where we're at with that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's not just that we just saw it. But if we put we able to use it's it's really for a lot of things. Yeah. It's, it's, it's going to be versatile. The, 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 the main use case that kind of tipped us to maybe even look at this is the maintenance of the ball field. All of our equipment is not geared around um, uh, an installation of that size. It's all more geared around like plowing roads yeah. or we digging the large trenches for road construction. And you just can't get the large equipment in there to do the job. We really only have one thing that's small enough to do any kind of maintenance since it's zero turn. Yeah. Right. So we everything's too big for bark and garden size jobs we have. Yeah. So the one of the estimates that you have right now is um the from Agritier, it's the loader, a bucket, a three-point bar, and that's 13, 6, 13,600. So it should be um I believe it's higher than that. Well, it's if you add on the mower deck, if you get a we got a mower deck for it, right? You have to use it to mow. And it, it's all in there. Uh, it would be, it's all broke down in the yeah, estimate. Um, sixteen thousand two hundred. Should have the loader. Um, I asked to uh, get a uh, forty-eight or sixty inch. I don't know which one they use it on the, the thing. It's going to be mower. Oh, I got was a sixty. And then also it comes with the three point, but um, we need a, a what draw draw bar for the three point so we can pull the ball field. Mm -hmm. And that was, were they going to give a discount? They were going to give a discount. Um, and all of them so far gave a discount because it's for a town okay. municipality. Yeah. I yeah. believe yeah. they were 15 percent. Okay. Yeah. So the other thing is yeah. place is offered to cash financing. Yeah. So it's going to be a situation where interest free for five years. Yeah. So we got to get details on it, but yeah, we have to that end a uh, ball field that we're struggling to maintain properly based on the fact that yeah. we're, we're trying to, to take care of it with something that's drastically too large for what that space is. We should get a tooth bar for the bucket so we can back drag. Yeah. Um, I do know the masses have a float function mm -hmm. where you can just literally tilt the bucket the way you want, put it in the float, and it just sits there and you can back drag it. it makes it really easy. Okay. And it's basically, it's a wash with the equipment that we sold. Yeah. If we're going to purchase something, if I could put my two cents in, yeah. I'd rather not find something because it's like a pain in the neck for me to keep, up, keep track of. That's fair. I don't, yeah. I honestly don't know how financing would work. I don't I, think you're going to get the 0% being that you're getting a better price. Or, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, we got to poke around and see. Let's find out what the numbers yeah. If we have the money, we can yeah. Try, we don't have yeah. To yeah. Get it out. Right. It's just watch basically yeah. the equipment that we sold and what we're looking at purchasing. Yeah. What yeah. told me this morning, he had some concern about the one unit on the exit here. Um, about not being an at, at a back hole on it or, or something, but I don't, I, I believe that we have a full size back hole, so we really wouldn't need a small back hole for like trend. Yeah, I can say we, we've got the big kid back hole, yeah. we don't need a little back hole attached yeah. on, on the subcom. I have a back hole attached because I don't have anything, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's better than nothing. Uh, no, uh, I have any more out of here. Mm -hmm. I look at the copper too because we'll be well, twice as well. You don't want to mention the name, but. Uh, he he looked at another truck's different car and he said that don't have a, a quick quick uh, yeah hit. quick quick connection absolutely plus the front the, the skin loader the skin loader front each is something that we all need we know we need um for versatility in the machine unless we want to stop at wrenches and feel this but uh, it's not the, the, the silicon over you're you're talking. Like a 40, 48 or it's either 48 or 60 for the, yeah. the ball. And the told me you can put a 72 mm -hmm. in the you, you, you might be able to, but I, I think I think I, I, I think 48 and 60 is is what you want to be at for 20 or zero turn is it's six day or sixty-one. Yeah, it's different gear ratio. That's a whole different, you know, yeah, you think, you know. Uh, the size we're looking at getting is the size I park tonight in the parking lot, roughly. Yeah. Because I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, mine. Mine. it's not it's the throw the track or whatever. <laughs> so that way, if there's any questions about size, <laughs> um, if you would like. Um, <laughs> if there's any questions about size, you can look at my tracker out in the park. Now, that tracker, my tracker looks bigger because it has the backhoe attachment on it, which it does not look that big with the backhoe attachment. 
But like I also told people, like, if you're going to use the front loader, right, because on something my side, that loader can do 950 pounds, right? But you would need a counterweight to lift with your rear three yeah. point. I, I use the back post counterweight for everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a tiller that I use the counterweight. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're going to on that next month based on quotes. We're probably going to be okay there, but uh, we want to make sure that we're looking at the right thing, the right warranty, the right technical specs. I do know the Massey warranty is six years on the tractor, it's one year on a woman's that are, that are Massey. If I didn't get to read the fine print yet on the end of three instruments. Okay. We got them from uh, Messex, Beer Country, and Upton Lebanon, um, Evelyn's, and then Aggregate. Good. Okay, next, uh, we have uh, item on the agenda number 26 for traffic issues. Uh, there are some people asking for dumpster exemptions. Um, you can fill out a request, so you would need to supply a copy of a, a valid business license, uh, or it has to be an apartment with a unit of five or more dwellings, a farm, or an actual commercial business. Um, business that is inside a residence uh, where the residence resides uh, does not qualify. If you work from home, also not considered a, a, a commercial property. Um, so, so just to clarify, yeah. it's only a commercial property. So, so only if you're, so you can only do business at your home if it is zoned for that, yeah. correctly. And so people that are working out at home, they, they, need, they need to understand that does not qualify them for a dumpster. And uh, just to clarify, it's for burning trash. We so strictly can, forbidden. Yeah, we can. We cannot burn trash. Tires. Yeah. Your tires. Yeah, don't burn tires. Okay. Uh, next, uh, we had a, a point of conversation around pay. Uh, there was a question on fine versus mileage, et cetera, for one of the conventions that was attended. At the February workshop meeting, we discussed and uh, made a motion to allow the three road crew members that had attended flagger training uh, to include the time in transit as as paid time based on uh, I'll say the historical precedents around that. Uh, we will be working to outline the policy going forward on that around time and mileage specifically, and it will be part of the before the meeting handbook. That way, it is is very clear cut and set in stone. Okay, next is the CWP LD 37 Main Street. Uh, there was a request for release of escrow money, total of $71,187. There has uh, needs to inspect this still, I believe. Yeah, that, that, that request just came in yesterday. Okay. Well, seriously. Yeah. He's getting it. Yeah. 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 I came in Tuesday morning at 5 and I was sitting on the uh, Shelf thing in the front bed, the off the floor. We can't, we can't figure out that in the office. Ah. Yeah. The it got stuck like on the shelf Monday, just the door. Mm -mm. No, it oh. was like, you could see it. It was like laying there, like somebody put it. I'll, I'll work on this all the Yeah. 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 Amherst. And, uh, and I have been, that owner has been. Asking for a lot of leeway on these landscaping things that I don't think we're taking into consideration. So I, I've been working with him on that. And Wednesday, we had a meeting with Graph Codes there because he is looking to get a temporary occupancy permit um, so that he can rent out the units in the buildings that have been finished. So there's a bunch list there. He needs a security uh, fencing up, he still doesn't have electric service for the lights. Um, and he needs to have a handicap parking space signed and marked, and perhaps he's ready to issue a temporary office permit, just so you know. Cool. Um, the owner is also debating the next series of buildings he builds, the possibility of maybe changing the configuration to have climate control. It just depends. He wants to see where the market goes with the unconditioned spaces now and then mm -hmm. from there. Okay. It is just looking very nice. Just, yeah. give you, just to give you an yeah. update on it. Yeah. Thank you, Chuck. Okay, next item is the PSATS disability plan. Um, all eligible employees must, the question that we had, and I think this is probably gonna be a 
follow up question is, um, is this the secretaries specifically? Because we don't really, like we have the, the disability stuff with the work group. Yeah, could be with the balance needed this and then, and, 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 and do it. So, Disability plan is something that you can offer as an employee benefit. Uh, it's within the board's discretion to determine who is offered the benefit. Absolutely. Yeah, and I say, we have, awesome. yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll be honest, I, I read the initial bit of it and I was like, I honestly don't know who this would even apply to other than like the road through it, but we'll, we'll look at it. Yeah, it's, there, there's no obligation to have it. To provide short or long term disability insurance. Mm -hmm. We have to look to see what the yeah. PSAS plan is. If you yeah. have it, next time I'm in the office, just pull it up and I'll take a look at it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, the next is the veteran real estate exemption. Uh, there's two residents that we would be needing to consider. The first one is David O. Marone, um, based on the fact that, uh, unless I'm mistaken, he is genuinely a veteran based yes. on yes. received. And this is um, from prior years. Yeah, approve that's, us. I'll make a motion to yeah. approve the veterans real estate exemption for David O'Brien. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Betsy. Aye. And uh, Irene is Joseph Stoltzboots a carryover? I believe so. Okay. Yeah. So based on that, I'll make a motion to approve the veterans real estate uh, exemption, exemption excuse me, for Joseph Stoltzboots. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Okay. And the last item on the agenda is the emergency management coordinator's report. I do not believe that we have any. He didn't submit anything. Yeah. Just FYI, he still has to purpose really anything that he's been approved of. And so um, he asked, we'll get the intent that we approved him. I don't think yeah. we approved that last year. Was, yeah. So he's like, I mean, I can't. Yeah. Uh, you do it on, on the credit card at the office. I said that's not a problem, John. So it doesn't go on his personal credit card. That's so we're going to come in and do that. I think he, he, he purchased some um, ratchet straps to keep that down. But other than that, he's just doing training. He attended the, the PSAT's uh, uh, conference for the court before the um, emergency managers and had a good time of it. So he's working pretty closely with, with the fire department now. So, so things are going well. Really well. Okay. Um, Lisa just got up, but uh, I don't think I have the police that report. That, thank you. <laughs> um, so other than that, we're, we're moving to supervisors' comments. Uh, Chuck. Well, I could, if I could amend the agenda for the benefit of uh, Marlon Ray Martin Poultry Operation, okay. it's a project um, I believe it was started five or six years ago. Um, over at 7627 Lancaster Avenue, really in Myerstown, the 501. Um, unbeknownst to them, they had a letter of credit. I'm not sure if it was an actual letter of credit for the site improvements or if the letter of credit was held to in substitution for a maintenance bond. So I'm not real sure of the amount. Regardless of that, um, they had received a notice from their bank that the 18 month oh. period was about to expire. The township authorizes that the letter of credit is going to be renewed. So she rushed in a request to lease the letter of credit. I was out on site yesterday and I'm happy to report that all the similar improvements they were deemed completed in September of 2022. But this maintenance period of 18 months was applied to this project. And, and um, everything, all the school improvements are in functioning. I have no deterioration, no problems, no structural problems. So it's my recommendation, the board take action to allow for the release of that remaining reserve credit for that project. Colin, is there, uh, do we have to do anything weird with the agenda? Yes, we'll we'll, we'll do amend the agenda. Okay. It's, it's fine. Okay. It's, it's okay. I'll make a motion to amend the agenda. Um, Lisa is away <laughs> right now. Sorry, Lisa. Um, right. yep. So uh, I'm going to make a motion to amend the agenda. Okay. Second. 
for the Marlin Rams. For, for, well, I was, I was going to do it in two minutes. Paul Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Who seconded that? Was it Jesse or? Irene. Irene. Okay. okay. Second motion is to authorize the release of the letter of credit for the Marlin Ray Martin poultry operation. Second. Irene. Uh, we're Paul Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jesse. Aye. I've seen that from the first time. For a while. Okay. okay. Yeah. 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 Well, you're no. yeah. You're a yeah. Okay. Uh, going into supervisor's comment, thank you, Lisa, for bringing this out. Um, other than a, a lot of traffic stops, there were 18 traffic stops and 27 citations that you last month. Uh, the rest of it was fairly quiet with the, the standard uh, amount of like EMS fire advisories, fallouts, and other uh, incident response items. So uh, apparently, lots of traffic stops, lots of tickets, but otherwise, fairly standard. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I do want to have Butch and the road crew pick up another probably two to four loads of full pack, full pack beyond what we've already approved. Um, for Colin's input, we'll, we'll do that and ratify it at next month's meeting. Um, but based on some of the driving around that I've seen, we're, we're going to need a full patch. So, uh, otherwise, um, the only reminder that I would have is I believe the timing of it is. is Long. Uh, we have the MTCA car show on May the 11th. Um, that would be the honest, that's nine until three. Yes. Okay. Um, from 9 a.m. until three, that uh, should be an, an awesome time. We usually have a really good turnout. And if anybody is interested in, in volunteering to help direct traffic or anything like that, let me know or let one of the MTCA members know. And, you know, we choose a, an extra set of hands. Um, Jesse, do you have any comments? Um, the only thing I have. For my comments is um, Saturday morning, um, the HOA gentleman, I forget his name, um, come, come to yep. me and the board here about these 50 baby catfish that's got stuck in the yeah. pond. That's the damn point. Point. Yeah. Um, I did look at that pond and it's my concern also is the algae. Yeah. So there's a lot of algae in there. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Yeah. A lot of algae in there. Um, the catfish. Um, catfish. Okay. So um, the pumpkin truck ended up having 50 catfish stuck in the screening. And that was hindering the flow of the truck. And he was he came in here with a bit of concern about that because that's his spot. That's their that's fire. fire. So he um expressed that concern and I went out there and took pictures and I saw tons of algae and pond. So the ponds should be being maintained by the HOA. That's that's why he also came here. It's it's um, not been released to the HOA. Yet. So I called the fish and boat commission and touch base with them. And yeah. there is permit permits and the whole nine yards that you can get to kill everything chemically, uh, but it has to be done through them. And they're permitting through them for a blessing of some sort. Of... <laughs> That's an FYI. It's a man made pot. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Did someone dump catch it? So I so, lost it because there was a lot of us. Let me see if I actually. So initially, initially, how else we get it done? Well, there's the what the, what the game commission and the, the boat fishing boat commission said is you know, ducks go from on pond and they get eggs on their bodies and they get oh, yeah? that way. Some eggs supposedly can survive from the identity trap. Um, nature, but, and yeah, life by some stock upon it. So, so it's evolution. Yeah, 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 so so um it uh yeah, so I mean there might be if, if the pawn isn't usable to fight fire. Yeah, that's how it's on so 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 we need to help the picture. Yeah, more. So he was at, asking us to try to push to get the HOA management to do like their maintenance thing. His plan planned on doing that um, because he had a concern because the, yeah. the developer or HOA people are not doing it. And he said, I believe he, I think he told me it was 18 months overdue or more than that. I don't remember. I was you. So the plans, who, who currently owns a pond? The HOA has a response. The developer still owns the land. The okay. HOA, I believe, has the response. Okay. They, they they all, all the, okay. Yeah, okay. Right. Right. So, okay. Yeah, but so they're saying they haven't been conveyed yet. That lot. That lot and that the lot hasn't been conveyed. That is correct. And the field and the plot have not been conveyed yet. Why haven't they been conveyed? Can't answer that. 
Well, uh, the, the infield the they had the yes permit is still up. Yeah, they were waiting to close up in the yes permit. So, on one and the other, so we'll be going. He gets the responsibility of the over. Yeah, yeah. 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 and that's what they were saying for us to look forward. Yeah, until they do their main, and, and it should be looked yeah. and, and honestly, something needs to be done because I'd say it's a major fire hazard. Yeah, yeah. they can't use they can't it's fire suppression. That's all the agent agent. But not a but not a that's been dedicated to it. Yeah, let's yeah. I'm assuming agent later on the other two. Let's take let's take let's take the matter on her advice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's yeah it's, it is a concern though, because then when they tried to, to use it to do yeah. a test, it didn't work. It did, it did. So. They lost flow. They said what less than 20 minutes. Yeah. And, and what this was a, a routine test. I believe our pumper went in there for a test yeah. the fire department. They're going to see. Yeah. So they, yeah. 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 So they connected to the dry hydrant and, and they had a 20 minutes test. flow and then it was all stopped up. And then it fish and algae and everything. Did it draw a water line with that? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Has the Security for this aspect of the municipal improvement. I, I have to look, but I there is still remaining financial security for stormwater. So we probably, probably have some right under the municipal improvements agreement yeah. and the property to potentially be that work and go and develop. Okay. To the extent that the developer does not take step, it would so be. You may want to send landmark a letter saying that you need to do this if they don't, then you get them on the stick, or do we just do it? The, the Let's let, let, let me think about Thanks. this direction. Okay. Any, any, any further stuff taken between the meetings can be ratified and have to be between the board and then the board agrees with the five minutes. Yeah, we, we need the legal advice on this, but we need to act on it as soon as we possibly can yep. to get who is responsible for putting that plan clean because I don't want to see a fire and people lose their house over yeah. fish. fish. Yeah, and algae. I would, I would say that condition is known for the park. Might put in another line in the pond to be able to draw. I would hope but that would take yeah. on. Right. That's, 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 there's a problem too. When I was there, there's that much algae, and I wouldn't even want to throw another line in. If there are main so mm -hmm. up that block, gotcha. it was that bad. Okay. You're better off trying to use the canal fitting yeah. over here and then yeah. busting it in. And that's losing time. So, Anytime there's again, necessary. again, there's a breakdown probably yeah. in maintenance responsibility. Yeah, that's what someone has to look at. If you guys can clarify that, it'd be great because I don't want to see anything like that. Any other comments, just Nope, that's it. Irene? Uh, just uh, kind of something to keep on our radar. We should mm -hmm. consider advertising for road group uh, come uh, within the next uh, couple of weeks, maybe months, because I love these guys, but there's not enough. Of them, yeah, on. yeah, and so if there isn't, there isn't. There's, there's a lot of stuff to do. So I believe we already have an ad to go. Um, uh, we could post that on Indeed. We got one response really the last time that was significant. Our little tap was joining the crew, but I think we still need to keep that circulating out there. Okay. Um, another kind of thing, Dave had mentioned it to me. Um, the gas tank that we have here, mm -hmm. he recommended that we fill it up with maybe about fifty to seventy-five gallons of gas. What's happening is our motor keeps on getting filled with the expensive stuff over in the hasslers. Yeah. Um, he said, let's just look into getting uh, that filled up. This way, the guys can just, um, mm -hmm. yeah, but they're using the high octane stuff, which my understanding is, oh, hold on, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's, not to, it's, it's not, not it's not, it's not, and they yeah. so we spent to just put gas stabilizer in it. We could get 50 to 75 gallons. So, um, that's something to consider. Does that need to go for approval for next stuff? Uh, I think so. Uh, I was just getting it done and we'll, yeah. if we have to motion yeah. on, most yeah. on that's, that's uh, it's intact. The maintenance we, we, the fuel company on want to deliver we, a lot of we'll, 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 we'll make some phone calls. Yeah. So, so if you want to find out then, you know, if something's delivered anywhere from 50 to 75 gallons for a gas tank, um, uh, to, to go along with that, um, we need some kind of a camera system. 
for. So we need a camera system on the tank. We need a camera system on the building. We need some type of a street. I don't care if it's a ring system. I don't care what it is, but we need something to observe that tank to make sure the gas isn't being stolen. Yeah. Okay. And this this way we have it. Um. And and just uh, to reiterate some of the stuff I was discussing at the workshop meeting, we're trying to be very forward thinking with with a lot of things now. So. Um, we're going to start involving you a little bit more of helping us to, to essentially dream, but also make tentative plans for improvements throughout the community. And so I'm um, just tossing around a, a concept we were talking about, calling it like the Marion Township Community Building Initiative. Um, we had, uh, there's a speed table, so we had talked about during uh, the workshop meeting. Yeah. So instead of, because our, our efforts to slow people down in town is just failing. People are ignoring those those lovely signs that we well, purchased. There were some people, there were some people, but people, the people that were going to speed no matter what are still speeding. Right. Uh, one, uh, right. right. Well, well, that, those are the bottles that we have that we got, got stolen. So again, this is this is a concept we're talking about once the sewer is done. Yeah. So again, tentative plans. Again, something like that. If we have the plans in place, we could start. Uh, we could finalize the project, apply for grants, things like that. Another aspect of it. Is is the building itself the park, um, which you're already uh, on board with? We want to we want to do as much of the property as we can. The other thing, the other concept we were talking about is sidewalks, and um, and if you could give us an idea over what where we can place sidewalks in town, how we could essentially construct town. But it, it it's also reaching out and, and what other things can we do in Marytown? What can we do to incentivize people to stay? To invest in our town to to build back this community because it, it's it's a dormant community and it, it makes me sad because it is a lovely little town i want to see people move to town i want to see people move throughout the entire township itself and say hey this is a place to, to come this is a place i want to raise my family this is a place i want to share with my friends and so if we create this initiative and we come up with these plans so i'm asking you to to, to dream big help us with some ideas things that, that, that we're thinking about. And so if we have a walkable village here and people are gonna come and walk, we're gonna make the, the building and the park a destination. And we're hoping us up here that people start seeing the, the village and, and the community center as, as a lovely place to be, that maybe that's gonna incentivize some people to take some of these little houses, maybe have like a little bookstore, have like a little coffee shop, because we have that zoning capability. I'm talking like a seven to 10 year plan, even a, a, a 2025 year plan. But I want to start from being forward and, and, and planning and helping us with budgeting to a certain extent. And there's some other concepts I could, I could talk to you afterwards about what they were talking about at the piece that's convention as far as uh, budgeting. But, but that's that's part of what, what I want to bring to the table and what I want to focus the, my, the rest of my, my term uh, with with uh, the board here, and so I'm I'm gonna hopefully run for re-election and and just keep on pursuing that avenue. I, I wanna wanna focus on building up Mary Township. That that's one of my goals. It'd be really nice to have sidewalks at the front lawn because right. I was in a wheelchair right. for six months and couldn't use them. Right, right. right. Well, well, I couldn't get I couldn't leave my house. Right. Uh, all my drive here is I always do it. You know, Main Street is your focal point. Right. The pavement needs help. Yeah. Yep. Prior to doing any pavement. If you're going to use liquid fuels, we have to address all the handicap devices, right. right. everything right. on our slot right. 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 that new pavement. Yep. Um, so I have worked on numerous projects in other communities, uh, basically like a streetscape project, yep. um, using community development block grant yep. money. Yep. Um, and you know the whole purpose of that program is, is beautification, creating a central place. It does, and I've seen it happen exactly what you yep. talked about. That seed money, if you will, is dressing up downtown. All of a sudden, property owners start taking a little more pride. Things are you know, improved and painted and what have you. And then businesses start noticing, yeah. and it, it, it can be a, a really interesting way to bring the vibrant thing back. Fleetwood did it. They got Grant to fix up Main Street. It looks a lot nicer than yeah. it used to look. Yeah. I, I, and, you know, it can go you know, as far as we're. Limited as you want, but you know, just some beautification strips or grass strips and street trees and, and street lights, park benches, you know, not a lot. Yeah. It's something yeah. in a place that's you know more attractive. You have to create the anchor. Yeah. 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 And, and just want to continue to be, be forward thinking. So 
Um, if you could help us gain perspective and, and get some uh, designs and ideas, and uh, we could create these future plans and continue to update the public and maybe even something have like a, a small section on the bulletin board, mm -hmm. community building and initiative of the projects that are planned, projects that hopefully down the road we'll get uh, grants and funding for. And, and just to move forward, because I you know, have my children here and maybe grandchildren, you know, keeping things within the community is important to me. And mm -hmm. I'm sure it's important to a lot of people. So, open open invitation, Kelly. I see your hand up. Let me just say this real quick. If you have an idea, don't hesitate to call the office or write it down and drop it off. There, there are no bad ideas. Obviously, some ideas we may not be able to find grant money for, but if you have a thought, put it in. I'd yeah. much rather have it there yeah. and circulate. Yes, you know, for the future, we could have one of our categories is community building initiative. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, okay. yes, it's what the community association is trying to do. We I put uh, banners up mm -hmm. on poles from every township. Yeah. Um, the movie nights, the car show that's on that we do in front of the community. Yep. Um, community fitness. Yep. The township's a responsibility. Yep. The community yep. says we can turn that on and try to bring people back. Um, yeah, you guys are kind of unofficially the you know, parks and rec board for, for Marion Township, and, and what we're shooting for here is kind of the other side of that. We want to help do the infrastructure aspect of it. You guys are doing the event portion of it in space, but we want to try to, to attack it the other direction, get money to do things like put up more banners, put in better sidewalks, put in planters or trees or whatever things that wouldn't necessarily it shouldn't really be within our budget certainly wouldn't be within the MPS yes, right. to do. Right. And again, my, my understanding that the big takeaway about from the conference is if you have the plans in place, instead of looking for grants to apply to if you have those plans in place, you, you take those plans and now the grants available. And so we're prepared and and, and unfortunately we we've been so far behind and in, in, in all these problems that have popped up since Peter and I took, took these seats up here. And now finally, I think things are on track and things are getting resolved. So I think it's time we could move forward and, and start planning. And then once the plans are in place, then boom, those grants pop up, we're able to easy, more easily apply them rather than chasing them down. And we can move forward with community development. I guess, sorry, folks really would want to go in until, uh, and unless the steward would go in. Yeah, it's yes and no. I you know. I think the ideal, you know, seven. that would be the way to yeah. go. But we could do it in phases and yeah, yeah. On one side, but then yeah, you want to make sure you do the other side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There is, the, there is, mm -hmm. a there's a lot of people that have confronted me throughout the years of living there. Just me pressure walking my sidewalk. Have come to me and said, I want to redo my sidewalk, but I don't want to do it because the door is going right. Mm -hmm. right. And so, you know what I mean? So I get, I get what they're, where they're coming from. We don't want to spend double, right? Yeah. Inside the streetscape project, I'm good yeah. it. So, including curb ends, sidewalk, pavement, crosswalks. I think Main Street lends itself to a boulevard street, yeah. right in the center aisle, yeah. trees, um, and then angle parking, picking up parking, because the parallel yeah. parking is very inefficient. The road's that wide. It is nice having the wide open, especially the car show. That promotes speeding. Then. Right. It does. It does. <laughs> but, it does. And those those speed tables, I yeah. think, are, are the solutions to our problem. Yeah, I was actually, I, yeah. I, I like the book, uh, book yeah. specifically that last one. Yeah. It, it's like a really long, low speed bump. Oh, yes, it is. Um, and so it's easier for them. But we, we need to have some, if we were going to do something like that, you don't want something to have to allow Oh, you can right, exactly. Right, right. It's yeah. actually pretty, so yeah. pretty, pretty much outright to yeah. speed bumps. So yeah. it's something that can be gradually. Uh -huh. Adjusted to with a, with a plow. Right. It's, it's, a it's not only the car speeding, it's yeah. the full size tractors with yeah. full size tanker speeding through Main Street. Yeah. I mean, it's not just cars. No, it's, so, it's speeding yeah. in general. So, so you know, I, I guess just to wind up, you know, we, we want to focus on building this community up and, and, and focusing some effort towards that and, and budgeting accordingly and also seeking for the grants yeah yeah i mean unfortunately that's the only way that we're going to do it but right. it's having that five to ten maybe 20 year plan that's in place and and because that's the way you build up a community that's when you you can revitalize a community for those of us that are it's for our children it's for our children and our grandchildren that's what i want to see those those taper comps i believe the clouds are okay yeah. longer not not the normal size people yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's not like they yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
I'm seeing the dream. You got to have yeah. Yep, yep. If you can help us out with that, I really appreciate it. So, Are you anything else? No, thank you. Excellent. Char. Um, the only thing I did want to mention and should have said so when we were talking about Stone Crawl Village, they did now submit their NDS permit. There was a termination. That's one of the points out there. Um, so the conservation district will have to after a rain event to see if that infiltration area indeed infiltrates. Okay. I know that's one of the things that's they're quite concerned yeah. about. And they couldn't do it over the winter for some rain conditions, what have you. Yeah. Okay. If there's any updates on that, I'm sure you're, you're usually trying to let you know what comes in. And, you know, so they're working towards closing out that development. Yeah, please just don't forget about the fish. <laughs> and the algae. I hear you. Uh, Colin, anything for you? Nothing, and there's no need for an executive session, right? Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Lisa, any comments for you? Uh, just to set up ready uh, on the website and how long are you going to use any number that is on the paratracker? No, homeowners can use any number that they want to, but let them know that they need to register right. with this paratracker. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So if they're already registered, that's great. Yeah. But if you have yeah. somebody that you do want to use, tell them. Sorry, it's yeah. Spanish. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, John. I'm so excited. You should mention about May 1st and Back in Street Street. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so we, as always, we street sweep a couple of weeks in advance of the 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 park. Show. We will be putting up signs that we can advance that for both events. April. April 25th. Yeah, so you can sign up now. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my my dates are all that kind of stuff, but we'll we'll be getting those signs up shortly. And like we did the past couple of years, we're gonna put up both signs at the same time, one for the car show, one for the street sweeper. Great. And then um the other thing that I had was have we talked to the Chelsea police about taking yeah. involved or after yeah. so I, I sent a bunch of lines out and I need to follow up with a number of people. Um I can't remember which municipality it was, but they had their meeting yesterday. I talked to the secretary before their meeting, and she said it was an agenda item. Um, I've not heard back from Marysburg yet, which is abnormal because usually they're the responsive. So I'm going to call their their office again. Um, and uh, Hawk and PD have the meeting via yes or no, but they're usually good for it. And then I actually don't have Steve Weaver, the new okay. I don't have contact information for that. Okay. Let's no, no, we just like have it there. Okay. Uh, like as representation, like have a stand or something. Yeah, it's, it's much the same. Just kind of go around. Yeah, the park. Yeah. You know, that makes a lot of fun. So it's, um, I have a, a whole bunch of lines out there, and I know a number of municipalities are, they have it on their uh, their April meetings. And I know last year, I just want to out, but there were state police here, uh, along 422 at the end of the park, though, which was. Yeah, I, I didn't actually, we didn't ask for them to show up. I think they just caught wind of it from Paul Hawkins and showed up. I'll, I'll, I'll reach out to them because that's actually, that's a good point. I forgot to do that. I'll see if we can get somebody from ESP here. Okay. And we can have Supervisor President at the community session meeting yeah. That would be that. Yes, and I apologize to be there the past couple of times, but like my work schedule, I was out of state most of the, the times that I spent meetings. Um, so if I'm physically here in PA, I'll be there. But first Thursday. Yeah. And I yeah. I'm I'm sorry about that too, because I planned on coming when he couldn't come to, or even when he was there. But I've been doing some physical therapy yet for my my injuries. So yeah. So I, I apologize for that specific one. I'll put everything I can be there. But I think this past month I was in in Washington, DC for that day. And unless we got one to start doing it on Zoom, I can dial in sometimes yeah. remotely, but I'm not physically here. I'm not physically here. Um, now, you want to say something? Yeah. I, okay, we're not going to there. You got two big pines. Yeah. You know, there's big trees falling everywhere. Big time. So if, if one of the pine trees falls down, I'll take my house, I'll take next door, and probably Tim Smith. Yeah. Yeah. So that's are these part of their their private property? Aren't they on the top? Are they up the no. worth? No, it's his next door neighbor in the front yard, right? Uh, it's your next door neighbor, but in the front yard, right? Not in the back. Yeah. <laughs> back there. Yeah. Must be pretty big. Yeah. Well, what can we have an order to say you can please stop off 
and say to a great power, don't do no damage to them. I mean, conceivably, we could. Right. But it would purely be a, a, a liability situation between homeowners. Yeah, we know what to tell them. Yeah. Here, uh, two years ago, a branch fell off and it went down to what, her gate? Mm -hmm. You know what? You know what the neighbor said? Like the insurance company said, so it was an act of nature. Right. So that bullshit has got to stop. Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll look into it, but um, a lot of this comes down to because, you know, it's, it's, even down the alley. It's a big, big uh, maple tree. Mm -hmm. If that one of the branches break and the guy drives through there, we'll get. It. I mean, I understand what you're saying because that tree is probably two or three hundred years old in my backfield. It's huge. Um, mine's healthy, thank God. Um, but it's still a tree, so I don't yeah, know. You can see the one on the property. Right. It's right in the middle of it. Yeah. You know, so it's yeah, it's it's gorgeous. It, it should be an ornament that you keep an accident tree. So if it does something yeah. it fall over, nobody gets hurt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll 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 look into it. Yeah, we'll, you know. I actually, when I bought my house, I asked my insurance company about that tree, and they just said, uh, it's a tree. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's not yeah. an age. It's not an age when it's still somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, on, on that launch, I'll, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is 9 18 p.m. I'm sorry, who seconded it? I Hi. 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 Hi.